Welcome to the Knit Together Podcast. My name is Julie. It's been about two weeks since I last made a video, so I'm here to give you a knitting update. I can tell you a little bit about what I'm wearing right now. This is the Gama Yakalopa, I think it's called. The English translation is the Flea Sweater. It is a sweater designed by Pinaguri on Ravelry. I think she's a Norwegian designer, um, and so there are some traditionally like Norwegian type of design elements in the sweater. This is the very first sweater. No, this is not the very first sweater I made. This is the second sweater that I made. Um, and uh, it was the first color work project I made, I think. It was the first big color work project I ever made, for sure. I think prior to this, I probably made some like slip stitch coasters, but these are the actual, this is like the first actual big project I made. It's made out of a whole different types of yarns. Um, it frequently pills, which is annoying. Um, I don't think I've talked about it on the podcast, so I'll go through them today. There are quite a few issues with the sweater, but I still wear it regardless. And the issues are not related to the design. It's, they're all my fault. Um, but to start with like a general description, it's a top-down uh, round yoke sweater, circular yoke sweater, um, seamless, and um, obviously has like all of her color work. I used a variety of different types of yarn for this. Um, the blue that is the button bands, the cuffs, and some of the color work up above is this blue that makes up a lot of the the big pieces is this Earth Monochrome Fingering Hand Dyed Extra Fine Merino. It is Extra Fine Superwash apparently, which I've definitely like felt it was, but never actually confirmed on the label. <laughs> um, it's like a fingering weight yarn. It's the first, it's like definitely the first like nice yarn that I used um, and I bought it at a local yarn store and I was gonna make a um, Jessie Mae Designs, um, her like sheer V sweater or something like that, but I didn't really enjoy making it. Um, so instead I, I pulled a little bit to use for the sweater. So that's the blue color. Um, the other dominant color is the white. That is Clubhorn Highland Fingering, which is a yarn that I've talked about in the past on the channel. It's um, from Cloud it's from Cloudborn Fibers, which I think is like, I don't think they make yarn anymore, um, but they made um, fairly affordable, um, like high quality yarn. It is a little bit loosely spun and it is a little bit on the light fingering side, um, which I think contributes to the fact that it pills so often. I just held up my arm and I mentioned that there were issues with the sweater. Part of it is that this, um, it has some bleeding issues. So there are like stains on different parts of the sweater. Um, I think there's a big, oh, there's a big patch here. And then there's some on my back as well. Um, and that comes from the really beautiful rust color. The beautiful rust color is um, a yarn. It's an unknown yarn to me. Um, I bought it at a yard sale and didn't realize that it could bleed. So in the future, if I use it ever again, which I might, I have like at least two cones of it still. Um, I will have to wash it well, um, try to get some of that bleeding out. Um, I, uh, something that makes me think I probably won't use it is that it's really, really like wiry. It's not soft at all. Um, it's not even itchy, it's just like stiff. I held it double because it is very, very light. So those are most of the colors. Let's see. There's also a gray in here, which is also the Highland Fingering um, in their gray color. Um, and although like those Highland Fingerings aren't, they're not like the softest thing in the world, but also they're not like super rustic either. They're not scratchy at all. So this is completely fine wearing close to next to skin. Um, it's, I prefer wearing it next to skin, especially on the arms because there's basically like zero or like maybe like a, a less than an inch of ease in the arms for the most part. So if I wear something underneath, it sometimes like distorts the the stitches um, and makes it look, you know, too stretched out. The last issue that I'll just share is um, some inconsistency with the, the fleas. So at the top of the sweater, the fleas are a lot smaller um, and less well-defined compared to like lower in the body or like on the sleeves. Um, and I think there are two reasons for that. I think the first is that I probably didn't use the right color dominance. Like I, I just honestly didn't know anything about color dominance then. 
and then also the tension is just too tight um so like as i went through with the sweater i figured out how to most optimally make the fleece look good so so that's that that's my sweater it's um been through the ringer probably um it has a whole host of issues but i i still wear it um but yeah it's a sweater that i would definitely make again i think um with like the stuff that i know now um i think i would be able to make a better sweater um i love the colors on this a lot um so i think my main challenge would just be finding the right um colors to go with it um, as I'm speaking about colors, I think I used one fewer color than the pattern calls for. So I think I did a little bit of, a little finagling. And then the last thing I'll say about this is because I was a beginner when I started, I don't think I realized that it would be a big undertaking um, to do like a full color work, like an all over color work fingering weight sweater. Another thing that's preventing me from do from making another sweater is because it is an all over color work thing, really sweater. Something else that I'll talk about, um, and before I get into like what I've been knitting, is um, a defense of large shawls. This is my Vertices Unite shawl. Um, it's a shawl that I shared on my very first episode uh, when I just finished it. Um, it's made from one, two, three, four, five, six, six colors six colors plus the border color, so seven, um, Knit Picks Gloss Fingering. The Vertices Unite shawl is a design by Stephen West. Um, and I was recently on vacation, so I was out um, in California for a couple, for like five days. <clears throat> um, and I carried the shawl everywhere with me. Um, I like used it as a blanket on the airplane or like in the airport, I had a canceled flight. So I had to like sit in the airport for like eight hours. I use this as a blanket. Um, I wore it around my neck as, you know, to, to keep me warm. It's a little bit bulky, but like I carried a tote bag around. So I just stuffed it in there and it wasn't a big deal. I love, I love this. This is great. Um, it isn't scratchy at all. It's made out of Merino, the, the wool content is Merino. And then it's 30% silk, so it's also a little bit sheeny, which is nice. I loved it. Um, it was great. I don't really have huge shawls like this, but having this around was really, really nice. And it's inspiring me to want to make another one. I don't know if I'll make a, another like Versus Night shawl or if I'll make something else. Um, something else that's been on my radar for probably more than a year now are um, Shetland Haps. Um, those are like big um, traditional Shetland shawls. Um, and I have a, like, decent stash of, um, Shetland-type yarns, um, so maybe I could do that, but anyway, this was great. This was fantastic, and I loved it. Um, I also love the fact that, I'm just gonna keep talking about it, I love that the fact that there are so many colors, it's just, like, super fun, and you never really get bored of it. Um, the shawl itself was really easy to make, it's mostly garter stitch, and you just follow the pattern. I guess it's all garter stitch and an I-cord an edging. Um, and then the yarns that I bought, I mentioned their Knit Picks gloss fingering. For some of their lines, Knit Picks has like value packs or color bundles, something like that. I purchased these yarns as a as one of those bundles. It, they called it like a rainbow bundle. So I think they were, because they were part of the bundle, they were discounted. And then because I bought it during some kind of sale, I think it was an extra discount. So it ended up being super, super affordable um, to get all this yarn. Um, and especially since it's, there's like some silk content, you know, that is oftentimes like you have to pay a little bit of premium for that, but this ended up being really economical. So, so yeah, this is my thing, uh, my Vertices Unite shawl that I'm just bringing back on. I don't have a ton of knitting content, but I have a couple of finished objects a little bit of works in progress and then some acquisitions so a little bit of everything um which i think is good um the first thing that i finished um i don't actually have to share um but i finished my leith hat which is a design by yasolda teague um i gave that to my friend um it was the friend that i went to go visit in california um the yarn that i used is this uh, Valley Yarns Hayden Bill DK. I have 
of all next to me, so I showed you that. Um, I purchased uh, three skeins, or three balls, so that, uh, since they're 50 grams each, I purchased 150 grams, but I only used 100, and I used almost every bit of those 100 grams. I have, like, the tiniest ball left. This Haydenville DK is obviously a DK weight. It's made out of 60% superwash, superwash merino and 40% acrylic microfiber, so it's very soft. It is, um, very soft. It's machine washable, good for gifts. Um, this is in the color navy 09, um, which um, my friend had specifically requested. The leaf hat is has a, a triple layer brim. Um, last episode I said it was two. It's actually triple. So there's like a folded brim that you secure, and then the third layer is like the hat, which goes from here up to here, uh, from the bottom of your head to the crown. I don't have the hat anymore because I gifted it away, and it currently lives in California. Yeah, my friend really, really liked it. Um, the couple of issues that I had, um, and they're not necessarily issues, um, but I had originally finished it up while I was on the plane, because um, it's like a six hour flight to get to California, um, and I didn't have a yarn scale. And I also didn't bring this third ball of yarn with me, which is really stupid. And because of all those things, I was scared that I was gonna run out of yarn. So I started my crown decreases, like maybe a little bit early. The crown decreases in the hat are pretty basic um, and I didn't follow those. Instead, I used the decreases in the Muscleboro hat, which is another sold it to you design. The, 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 leaf hat, the leaf hat does almost like, it does a really rapid decrease and then a cinch because it's designed for beginners. But my friend and I agreed that it looked better if it was a little bit more of a rounded um, gradual taper. So, um, I followed the instructions in the muscle bar hat decrease um, and ended up with quite a bit of yarn left over. Uh, when I put the hat on my head, it seemed a little too close to the head, like not really my preferred look. When I got to California, he tried it on and agreed that it would be nicer if it was a little bit longer, a little slouchier. First I weighed the <laughs> amount of yarn that I had left over and then I took apart the, the crown decreases. I reweighed the yarn. And the difference between those two values is approximately around the grams of yarn that I would need to make the decreases. So I knit, knit, I would knit in plain stockinette, knit, 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 until I almost reached the, the differential amount. Let's say I calculated that eight grams were necessary to do the crown decreases. When I got to nine or 10 grams, I started those decreases. So I have just a little ball of left, yarn left. Um, and the hat fits a lot better if it's sort of the way that we both envisioned. So I'm really, really happy. Um, yeah, I have one I have one more ball of this left. I might purchase a little bit more um, next time I purchase from Webs because there are some other like gift knits that I'd like to do. And it turns out a lot of the people that I knit for like Navy. So I'll hold, this, I'll, I'll hold on to this for, for a little bit. So that was my first finished object. Um, the second one is something that you've never seen before, but it's sort of like an ongoing project of mine. When people I know have babies, I try to knit them a nice little baby hat. Um, I'm personally not very familiar with babies, so I don't know exactly how big a baby head is, but um, I basically cast on, I think I cast on maybe 55 stitches um, in a worsted weight yarn. I only had a size five needle on this trip, which really bugged me to it, bugged me to no end. But I tried to knit sort of loosely, and it worked out pretty well. I think this will fit a baby's head. I follow generally um, the baby bear hat pattern on Ravelry, which is a free pattern. Um, so I guess this isn't a finished object yet because what I'll still need to do is put little baby uh, bear ears on them, and it ends up looking really cute. Um, I typically use the same yarn for all of these hats. This is also from Knit Picks, actually. This is, um, their Brava Speckle in whatever the orange one is called. I also have, um, the same Brava Speckle yarn in Blue Speckle and Red Speckle. I know the red one is called Cherry. Uh, I don't know what this like yellow orange and the blue one are and I sort of make I sort of choose the colors based on 
based on if I think the parents would like a, like a gendered color hat or not. Um, this orange yellow thing is, is cute though, regardless. Um, so yeah, so I'll link the baby bear hat pattern below. While the video file is um, exporting or like uploading to YouTube, I'll finish the little ears and make the little cover photo thumbnail this because it's super cute. So baby hats. Um, I still have this much of the orange Brava speckle. I might have another 100 grams, honestly. Um, and I, there are a lot of babies that I know, so I'll probably try to crank out a couple more of these. I think that's all I have in terms of finished objects, just those two hats. Um, I have a little bit to talk about for work in progress, not too much, because um, I was away and not knitting a lot. Um, but yeah. So <clears throat> for the last couple episodes, I've been talking about my Rebel Bralette. This is a design by Jesse Made Designs and it's going to, I swear to God, it's going to fit me. It's, the rib will stretch out a lot. Doesn't look like it's going to fit me, but it will. <laughs> um, this I've been making with Knit Picks gloss fingering in their plume colorway. I've said it so many times on the podcast that I remember now. Plume and bear, these are leftover um, yarns from the Virgis Easy Night shawl that I talked about earlier. According to other people's projects on Ravelry, I've decided that a good length for the shawl, uh, for the shawl, for the bralette is about eight inches. So I'm almost there. I think I'm about like six and a half or seven inches so far. So I've just started um, transitioning from this three by three rib into um, like the part where you start differentiating the front and back. So, so that's exciting. Um, I didn't have enough yarn to do it all in one solid color. So I'm striping. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. I don't really, I'm not the hugest fan of like knitting rib. So I only knit when, I only knit this when I'm watching TV really. Um, because it's, it's easy enough to do without really looking and I would never want to do this if I had nothing else to do. So I need to sort of soften the blow of knitting rib for, for this much time um, with TV. In the last couple episodes, I've been sharing my progress on a pair of pants that I've been knitting. I have made zero progress on that since I filmed my last episode um, because I'm frustrated by the fact that it's so big. Um, I think last episode I might have mentioned that I will, I might just keep going. I haven't decided. I might tear it back. It's just so big. Um, and I'm already, I'm not super concerned that I'm all run out of yarn, but um, I'm like on the cusp of what the, the designer recommended. Um, so I know there's like a buffer that they normally give, but there's just like so much fabric in the butt um, that I end up having cropped pants. That really defeats the purpose of me knitting warm pants that will cover my entire lower half. So we'll see. Um, and then the, um, my camera stopped recording about 30 minutes ago, so I have to restart. Um, it looks like the last thing I talked about were my pants that are too big and um, might not be long enough. So I'll start from there. I have a couple of acquisitions um, and I'll try to make them quick. The first thing that I want to talk about is this book. It's called Knitting Around the World. It's by Layla Nargi. It is a book with sections all about the knitting traditions in different parts of the world. So it starts with the Islamic world, Western Europe, the British Isles and Ireland, Scandinavia and Iceland, the Baltics, Eastern Europe and the Balkans, Asia, Australia and New Zealand, the United States and Canada, and finally South America and Central America. It gives examples and goes into those knitting traditions, which I really, really enjoy. I am flipping through right now, trying to find something that I wanted to share. This is really cool, actually. This is um, a an example of iCat, I-K-A-T, which is a, a method of dyeing um, like hanks of yarn. And it's, they call it a Scandinavian version of tie dyeing, where you like 
you take the skein of yarn and then you knot it in different spots and then you dye the yarn and the places where you tie um presumably are they're like resists so they don't absorb the dye as readily as the places that don't have the knots and so when you knit it up you end up getting a fabric that looks like this and this reminded me a lot of color pulling um like selective pulling i think it, it, color pulling i think that's what it's called which is something that um some knitters and crocheters are, are really into where they can make really sometimes deliberate but also other times not deliberate patternings um based on the way that the yarn is dyed so that was really cool it's like a it's like a, a historical tie to something that um people do nowadays which is also really cool these are wrist warmers from greenland they're beaded so instead of doing color work with a contrasting color of yarn uh the contrast color is presented in beads and then let's see i also thought the um the baltics section was really cool so they have a lot of examples of like estonian mittens and then i also there's one last thing that was really cool um that i saw when i was flipping through these are some stockings uh, from Turkey and they are modern stockings. There's a ton of information in here and the thing that I really appreciate and think is really cool is that it focuses on specifically native traditions um, with color work. There are like monochromatic designs in here as well that focus more on like textures and stuff like that but there's a big emphasis on on color work. These are neat. I think these are the same sweaters that are on the cover. Um, and they're from somewhere in Scandinavia. They're coarse staff sweaters. You can also sort of see it's one of those sweaters is the same one that's on the cover. And they have like a similar flea design to the sweater I'm wearing now, which is cool. Okay. So that's the book that I got. Um, I got this book a couple of weeks ago before actually my last episode um, at a used bookstore called The Book Barn, which is close to where I grew up. And The Book Barn is a fantastic used bookstore. They have multiple locations because they divide up their collection based on like category, based on genre. And the different, uh, the different locations have different specialties. So the crafting and fiber work, fiber arts section is at one of the auxiliary facilities and they have a really, really nice uh, catalog of knitting books and like everything else. It's a fantastic. If you're in Southeastern Connecticut and need to go visit a bookstore, I'll leave um, the information to the book barn below. And then the last couple of acquisitions I have are stuff that I brought back from California with me. These are skeins of yarn obviously um <laughs> um the friend that i was visiting in california went to go visit scotland uh, last fall and in while he was in edinburgh, edinburgh he found a yarn store and bought yarn for me which is really really nice i think he asked the uh, people that were working in the store to point him to like the most scottish yarn available there and um the yarn that would be most difficult to find anywhere else. Um, this is Iona wool, 100% single origin Iona yarn from the island of Iona, which is a Hebridean island. It's not single breed, my understanding is, um, but it is all from that island. And, you know, I think this shop owners did a good job. I've never seen this yarn before, but I'm so excited to use it. Um, this each hank is 100 grams of four ply, like fingering weight, basically yarn, 340 meters in the hank. Um, this color is called lichen, and this color is called serpentine. Um, I'm like super stoked to use this. I think I'll try to make um, me and my friend a pair of like matching or like inverted somethings. Um, I think if I use 
I mean, this is 200 grams, so this is quite a bit of yarn. If I pull in some like Jameson Smith um, jumper weight two ply in like a white collar or something like that, um, it'll help these stretch even further. Um, this is great. I love it. I am so thankful that I have this. So that's that. And then the last yarn acquisition that I have is something that I purchased for myself. The first couple days I spent in California were in Santa Barbara and the last couple days were in, in LA. In Santa Barbara is when I finished my the hat that I gave to my friend, the leaf hat, and I only had needles that were that were like suited for that yarn. The I had um, this yarn with me, but I only had size five needles, which I used for the hat. I didn't really want. I normally make these hats with like a size eight, a US eight. I was like mm, feeling down and like out of things to knit, made me really sad. So Santa Barbara, I tried looking for new, I tried looking for both new needles or new yarn, um, either new needles to knit this with or new yarn that I could pair with my existing needles that I had. It ended up being like fine. I could use my size fives for this. It wasn't a big deal. I knit them a little looser. I had a lot of issues finding yarn in Santa Barbara. Um, like knitting supplies in Santa Barbara. But when we got to LA, one of the first places we went was Santa Monica. We wanted to go see what like the hubbub was all about um, with the beaches there and just like the beach community. And in Santa Mar Monica, they have a yarn store. It's called Wild Fiber Studio. Um, and I purchased this there. Um, this is from Juniper Moon Farm. It's called their Patagonia Organic Merino. It's the finest organic merino humanely raised in Argentina. So that's what this label looks like. It's 100% wool, um, 350 meters in 100 grams in the color Cardinal. It's a yarn that I can get like other places as well. Um, and I've definitely seen it before, but it's a yarn I never used. So I was happy to buy it there. Um, I did notice though that the store had a lot less animal fiber yarn than I was accustomed to and a lot more plant fibers. Um, so that makes sense. The couple of days that I was in California, it wasn't terribly warm. Um, it was about like 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit was the high. So it was probably like good weather for me at least to wear like a light fingering, like a fingering weight sweater. Um, but even the employees in the store were wearing, it would look like fi plant fibers. So, so yeah, I didn't end up using this, but I have it now and I will probably make another leaf hat actually out of this. Someone I know um, requested a red hat and it's uh, something that I haven't really started on, but this is, it, it, this person also, I think I can trust more to, to hand wash um, a hand knit. So um, I will be making a, probably another leaf hat out of this yarn because I really enjoyed the last one. And that's where I'll leave you today, I think. Um, hopefully, the second half of the video recorded all right um and i am gonna get on with editing it together um i'll get some ears on this hat i'm super excited and i'll um post it as the cover photo hopefully so yeah i hope you have a great rest of your day i hope it's filled with a lot of good knitting if you enjoyed what you watched uh leave a like a comment and maybe subscribe i try to post videos every two weeks so Hopefully you'll see another video in two weeks. All right, bye.